What's going on fam? It's your boy Sydney from the Nectar Gardeners. Today uh, we've been getting a lot of feedback of the video that we've done last year that we didn't get to finish and what it was is the which fertilizer is the best for tomatoes and the extreme heat basically killed our tomatoes and kind of stunted them and stressed them out and then just when they was recovering when we just got to the cooler months that crazy arctic blast just came out of nowhere and just did uh, finished off the uh, plants off what the extreme heat couldn't do so before we get into this video we're going to talk about some of the questions and what we're going to do to resolve the issue where we're not going to have uh, run into the same issues of the extreme heat and of the arctic blast let's get growing so let's get into some of the questions that a lot of people had some comments on the video where we did this one of the person put good video can't wait to see the results i've used a fertilizer that we're using and this year i've tried a new one recommended to me by a local amish feed mill the brand is called hybrix uh, we don't have an Amish community uh, out here, not that I know of. Uh, we do have a Mennonite community. Uh, they're similar to the Amish, except for they do use technology, cell phones, and vehicles. Uh, but they don't have anything of that nature. I wonder if it's a granular or a liquid feed. Uh, comment down below if you know anything about uh, hybrids. Another person put, I can't wait to see the results we're using for the tomatoes uh, fertilizer spikes. They've been, they seem to work good for us, but the Miracle Care, I guess they meant the Miracle Grow, I know this sucks for us and seems like next day our plants are look, look worse than what it is before. With Miracle Grow, um, they are a synthetic fertilizer and most of their fertilizers are geared to feed your plants and your plants are going to only uh, take up that nutrient so much and it's very high in salts uh, however if you use granular or other liquid feeds they actually feed your soil which the plant will then take the nutrients depending on the ph level the water nutrients and all that other stuff will take up those nutrients of the tomatoes so uh, if you use miracle Grow and have great success, that's fine. But the way fertilizers are going up right now, I mean, we were just looking at, fish, we were at uh, the big box, the orange big box store. And I was just looking at the fish, uh, fish fertilizers, the 511. And about three, four years ago, back, yeah, about five years, four to five years ago, you could get a whole gallon. It was real cheap. I was probably $14, $17. And now it's almost $30. I mean, price with fertilizer has increased. That's why we're doing these experiments. Some of these are uh, less expensive. Some of these you can grow uh, at your own property, on your homestead, in an apartment, whatever it may be. But I'm trying to give you some options what you can use to save some money. Uh, another comment was, great video, never heard of putting a crack egg in where you plant your tomato plant. I'm going to try that next year. Can you do it like your pepper plants? Yes, you can. Also, I have a question. I never had any luck with bell peppers. I don't know why. I'm going to get a soil test and rest my soil. Yes, uh, so yes, you can put a cracked egg in your any of your nightshades from your tomatoes, okra, peppers, and uh, eggplants. Uh, you could put them in any one of those. I know we had a lot of comments about people saying, well, when you put a cracked egg in there, it's, it's going to take forever to break down. Yes, that is true. There, however, there is some nutrients in that egg uh, yolk and the whites that it will be able to take up some of that nutrients up from there. Uh, but, and we're actually going to try to see if that is actually true. Uh, we're going to empty all of these uh, containers out and we're going to kind of revitalize the soil, uh, amend the soil all equally and then put them back into these pots. I'm going to move them uh, that test the experiment row back one one area so that way I can plant the uh, okras that we're about to plant along with some other uh, vegetable varieties. Another person put they use Epsom salt, wood ash, compost, and the whole prior to planting. And then they'll mulch with grass clippings. 
and have fabulous tomatoes with this method. Yeah, so with mulching, uh, with our containers, we do mulch heavily, about two to four inches, because with container plants, they do dry out uh, faster than with in-ground. Uh, with in-ground, it does retain some moisture. We do do our in-grounds with uh, compost, we do it with, with mulch. Uh, another person put, they use liquid fertilizer, I'm gonna try it out this year. We do use fish fertilizer, 511. It's a, it was a lot cheaper about four or five years ago. Now it's almost $30. If uh, wherever you're at for a gallon, comment down below, let us know how much is you, uh, fish fertilizer, the 511 is in, out in your area. Another viewer put a, uh, they plant a handful of blood meal, bone meal, worm casting, then every week for a month, they fertilize with fish, fish fertilizer, then they fertilize it with liquid seaweed and for the rest of the summer, every three weeks. So that's a good combination because you, with the fish uh, fertilizer, the 511, uh, you're gonna have a high nit uh, nitrogen rating in that one with that five as your first rating. And then with the liquid seaweed, the kelp, uh, they had, it's gonna be added some micronutrients for your soil, which is gonna be very good and beneficial for your plants as well. One person put, do you really, yeah. So this was one of the comments, do you realize that putting eggshells into the pot like that is absolutely no benefit? Yes, it is. Uh, to the plant, uh, the eggshell takes years to break down. Just put it in compost, uh, put the eggshell back in the compost and go back to the following year and they will still be there. So matter of fact, let's do that right now. Let's, uh, check each one of these containers because like I said, when we first started this, uh, we put an egg in them. We're gonna still do it again. So I'm pretty sure some more people are gonna get mad. Oh well. Uh, and we're gonna try to see if there's still some eggshell. If it is, like I said, oh well, you're gonna take up the nutrients from that, uh, what's inside the eggshell of the yolk and the white. So I'm gonna get a tarp. We're gonna empty them all out, separate the, uh, the mulch that we did, the pine mulch that we had in there, and then add some uh, potting mix and uh, some black cow cow. Oh yeah, we do still got some of the egg in there. Ain't no biggie. So we're just going to add the black cow to this and mix this all up and add these into the container. The top of this is what I want about to about the bottom of here. And I want this much gap. Let me go with this side. So this lip, there's a lip right here. There's a lip right here. And there's a lip right here. I don't want to, I want 
the top of this to be around the top of that and then we're going to add that much mulch later especially when it gets into the extreme uh, heat once we hit the uh, about the 95 degrees we'll heavily mulch this out so about right there give or take doesn't have to be exact Add some more around it. Oh, what was that? Oh, we got a grub worm. Glad I caught that early. We'll save that for the chicken food feed later. Those are very bad. You don't want those in your soil. Those beetles during the fall time will lay just about all of those in the ground they'll be eating on your roots like that take that out and see you got that nice little crevice and then you put that right on top of that stand that straight up and you're good all right, we'll do the rest of these and show you what we'll do later. A lot of these look very sickly, but with this soil and the stuff that we added to it, it's going to come out just right. About two to three weeks, it will be perked up. So let me tell you a quick difference between indeterminate and determinate. With indeterminate, they are set to grow anywhere from 8 to 16 feet long, if not longer. Uh, they just continue to grow. The only time it will stop growing once frost hit it, or if you're in Texas or Northeast Texas or Texas period, with the humidity, it just gets too hot for it and the humidity just, just kills it all off. Uh, so unless you're going to grow, at least with our experience, unless you're going to grow it in a high tunnel, you, it, it's it's very tricky on how you're going to grow indeterminate uh, tomatoes. And they'll just keep on setting off fruit until, like I said, they die off, the frost hits, or just the humidity here in Texas. I'm not sure where y'all have success at where you're at. If you have success in Texas, comment down below. Let, let us know how do you grow that. Now let's talk about determinate. Determinate tomatoes will only grow anywhere from from a foot to up to no more sometimes five to six feet high they have a certain amount of fruit that it will uh, fruit out before it just dies out so you want to succession plant those now we're going to be doing a seminar here soon about how to succession plant and things of that nature if you're interested about that sign up for a newsletter go to our website thenakedgardeners.com and hit that newsletter subscribe to our newsletter but with determinate tomatoes like i said we had our best luck last year with those with the roma and the borghese so hopefully with these determinate we'll have the same success i don't think it's going to be that hot uh, this year because last year we was already in the 95s and higher in the month of may normally we don't start getting that in the 90s till the month of june and then july 95 and higher than august triple digits with no rain a few things that we've done differently like i said was instead of doing the indeterminate we're going to go with the determinate of variety and these are the red snapper they're supposed to be a, a hybrid now these are supposed to be more of a hybrid but with a heirloom taste to it uh so uh Far farmer forberg 
he told us about this at the APA convention and we're gonna give it a try if we like it or not uh, we're probably gonna do a succession planting of this uh, we have the seeds for this uh, the seeds that we did start off with they uh, died uh, because of the cold front that kept on coming in I was able to pick these up at HEB they already had some starts and they were real cheap at the time they were I want to say two almost three dollars uh, so that was a good steal uh, for that normally I wouldn't buy determinate starter plants I would if anything I would buy indeterminate but since uh, me and Mrs. Nick Garner were real eager to try these red snappers because these are supposed to be the best tasting uh, hybrid patio determinate um, tomatoes so it's gonna be interesting to see how these go we're gonna water these in the reason why I left that much gap is when I'm gonna water them to kind of get rid of a lot of the air gaps into these and I'm going to deep water with tomatoes you want a deep watering a consistent deep watering at that uh, so you want it for especially with containers I would even say even with in ground we normally do it like a 30 second count on the shower I would say dial on the uh, hose there and what that would do is once you get your 30 second count and once we start seeing the water uh, empty drain out of the bottom of these that's when we know we're going uh, we can stop watering I'm glad I left the tags on these because what we're going to be able to do is write on the tag the variety of uh, fertilizer that we're going to be using off of these I think I think in about next two weeks we should be able to mulch this once I see it's been recovered I'm not going to add any fertilizer <laughs> fertilizer to this just yet it probably be this Friday normally on Fridays that's when we do our fertilizer because we call it fertilizer Fridays another reason why we left that gap is when you're watering sometimes if you have it up to your soil up to the rim of your container and when you're watering this spills out this way it keeps all that water in no soil it will be eroding from the container we'll watch it once it uh, leaves uh, drains from the bottom of that the reason why we had it up elevated is because I didn't want the fertilizer once it's breaking down and it goes <laughs> through the container I didn't want the other plants to be kind of uh, gaining some of that fertilizer so I want to be as more control as possible that I could do it and I think elevated is going to be uh, good for this uh, test man it looks like <laughs> it went from sunny now to look like the rain's about to come in from the from the east southeast area but all in all, I'm excited about this experiment and hopefully it turns out a lot better than last year's experiment. If you want to see how we did on that one, we'll put that video off to the side and also in the description down below. Until the next video, let's grow together.